lot of NFL news and notes to get into. Ian Rappaport does a great job with the NFL Network. NFL Media Insider, great follow on Twitter, at Rap Sheet. Uh, just a reminder, NFL Network carrying six live preseason games this week, beginning Thursday. We are approaching that time, and Ian's kind enough to join us on a Wednesday. How you been, Ian? I'm good, man. How are you? Uh, I'm doing real well. Uh, always good to catch up to you. Let's kind of get right into a little whip around. And uh, I thought going into this season, Rex Ryan was, quote, on the uh, proverbial hot seat. And now the Bills not only have to deal with some of these injury bugs, these injury news, is now it comes down that uh, Marcel Darius is hit with that four-game suspension. And when you read the statement by the team, I mean, typically you're talking about franchises who will back inside with a player. Uh, not in this case. I mean, they're livid at him. Kind of a two, two-pronged question. Um, you know, is this situation where they're just flat-out tired of Darius and – if Rex Ryan fails to make the playoffs, do you foresee him out after this year in Buffalo? Well, you know, first of all, on, on, on Darius, uh, they it's not that they're tired of him. It's really just that they're disappointed. I mean, this is a guy, you know, they gave a $100 million contract to. They believe in a person who claims to be one of the leaders on the team. And, you know, when you get that kind of money, you sort of have to be. And instead of leading, um, he really – will serve as, as an example to be the opposite. Yeah. You know, he's going to be off the field for four games. Uh, he did it. You know, it's not like, it's nothing to hide behind. He did it. He missed a drug test, as he told reporters this morning, which is the exact same as failing a drug test, because generally you only miss it if you know that the outcome is going to be bad. Good point. Um, so, you know, I, I know they're tired of him. I know they're disappointed. Uh, and I know that, you know, everything they hope for from him uh, at this point, you know, he has really has not held up his end of the bargain. Um, so I think that's one part of it. You know, the other part of it is, um, you mentioned Rex. I mean, it, it is, you know, it is pretty clear some big things are expected and needed from the Bills this year. You know, I don't know if it's going to be make the playoffs or else because it's been a long time since they've done it. And, you know, let's say they go 8-8 eight and eight, but, but show themselves to be a really good, competent team and, yep. you know, somehow lose out to, let's say, Two really, you know, really good Patriots team and a really good Dolphins team. I'm not sure anybody would say, "All right, we need to fire this guy and start over." It's really just, um, you know, what does what does it look like for the Bills? What's the season like? Are they improving? Are they competent? Uh, is the defense good? Um, you know, those sorts of things that will determine his fate. But you know, I would certainly agree that that I would not say his status is rock solid right now. Uh, the 49ers went out and signed Christian Ponder to a one-year deal. They lose that Lewis to that knee injury. Now you got Colin Kaepernick with the dead arm. Uh, I think it's five, six days in a row without a pass attempt. Uh, you look at Blaine Gabbert. I, again, you know, hearing mixed reviews on Gabbert, I don't know if they believe he's the quarterback of the future. I don't know if it's a situation where it's his job to steal or lose. I mean, I, personally, I think Kaepernick seems to be a better fit in their offense and the scheme as well. Um, but what's going on there with Chip Kelly, first year as head coach, in their quarterback situation? Well, I think they'd like to know if, if Kaepernick is their future. They'd like to know if he's the franchise quarterback, if he's as good a fit in Chip Kelly's system as, as Kelly originally thought. I mean, this is a guy who, you know, the Eagles coach thought about trading for last year when he was with Philadelphia, a guy he's liked for some time, a person who, you know, you mentioned would be, would certainly have some characteristics that would say, all right, this guy could thrive in this offense. Uh, he just hasn't really had the chance to do it. You know, he's been he's been injured, and you know, there's a lot of blame to go around. I'm sure Kaepernick is getting blamed some, but uh, you know, he's battling arm soreness, and what can you do? It is yeah. it's unfortunate, but you know, there's nothing you can do. So, you know, I would I would I would make an educated guess now and say, you know, Blaine Gabbard is is almost certainly going to be the starter for the season. Um, to start the season, and then, you know, we'll see what happens. Because remember, in in a lot of, regardless of the level, Chip Kelly has played two quarterbacks in many of the seasons. <laughs> we know all too well. <laughs> this is uh, you're yeah. you're you're definitely uh, you're you're dead on on that one. Again, a couple minutes with um, Ian Rappaport, NFL Media Insider. Catch him on the NFL Network. Great follow on Twitter at Rap Sheet. Rich Canyon is here. Um, I'm, I'm curious, keeping in the, uh, well, let's go back to the NFC East for a moment. I'll get your thoughts on Lane Johnson, but I want to get uh, your thoughts on Victor Cruz. And, and I firmly believe not only does Victor Cruz need to go out, um, 
play in these practices, I'm not even talking about a high level, show that his body can take the wear and tear, play in a preseason game, catch a ball, make a move, run a route, get popped, and then get back up, and then the next day tell Coach McAdoo, my body's fine. Uh, how is is he really in danger of getting cut here? Um, you know, if he can't get on the field, then I don't know how he helps the team. You know, I don't know that they would specifically cut him. Um, you know, I think some would probably depend on his contract status. Uh, I think there's a lot of questions you'd have, but uh, I don't think anybody would, would di- you know, dispute that Victor Cruz is a great talent and has been a great player over the course of his career. Yeah. But, you know, again, it's like if he's not available, if he's not healthy, then... Coughlin hated that. Like, yeah, he hated guys missing practices because of you injuries. You know, what, do you, what are you going to do? Like, I- it's... And it's, I don't even, it's not even his fault. You know, of course he wants to be out there. I'm sure he's doing everything he can to take care of himself. But at some point, you have to make a decision as a team. Do I keep this guy that I love? Or do I keep players who are going to be able to actually play? And I think the Giants do face a very difficult decision. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being, hey, it's a foregone conclusion. It's a done deal. It's happening. Um, Lane Johnson, 10-game suspension. I... I, I I think if anything, I don't know if it's going to be 10 games. I certainly think he's going to be suspended. But what's the latest? What are you hearing? And it seems as though not only is he contradicting himself, but he's looking at he's looking at everyone else but himself in the mirror. Yeah, I mean, I think when you you know he's come out and basically admitted that he did it, failed another test. Uh, there are different reasons you can cite, um, but you know ignorance is is not one of them. And the way the the NFL and the NFLPA have collectively bargained this, um, and I know both sides are sort of taking taking shots here, but it's something that all everybody agreed on. Um, you know, players are responsible for what goes in their bodies, and it's you know I would I would be absolutely stunned if Johnson won on appeal, especially because he came out publicly and said he did it. Yeah. So you know I would expect him to be suspended for for ten games. Um, you know I guess he will appeal, but. Not everyone does, but it's sometimes you're just you're just beaten. Um, so yeah, I mean, I would absolutely expect him not to be out there when the season starts. Uh, a lot of people think that because the NFL, uh, the, the mandate here, it's an, an extremely aggressive move uh, with the Linger and PD probe um, from that Al Jazeera documentary, and you got the four players: you got Matthews, Peppers, Harrison, and you got Neil. That they have to interview. If not, they're going to be slapped. Uh, with his suspension is I don't want to say how much of a power play is this by the NFL but uh, how, how is how is this going to get resolved here I mean do you do you foresee these four players interviewing uh, yeah I mean I don't see any other way around it you know I mean I think the the NFL was pretty clear either they interview or they get suspended so I mean unless you know the only other option would be to somehow take it to court um, but you know, we've seen how that goes. We've, we've seen how uh, the time that it takes, we've seen what can happen. You know, if if they take it to court, if a stay is not granted, then these guys will be off the field anyway and a suspension would hold. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you know, you can – we can talk, call it whatever we want. Uh, and I know a lot of people have different opinions on the NFL and their power and all that. You know, Roger Goodell does have this power under the CBA. Yes. Uh, it's been upheld in several court decisions, and he has said to them, either come interview or get suspended. So I would imagine if they don't interview, they will all get suspended. Uh, last one for you as we wrap it up. I'm curious to get your take on this one. So Jerry Jones, Paul Tagliabue, they're going to get in uh, as far as um, uh, for the NFL, the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And then you're looking at guys like Pat Bowlin with the Broncos and uh, former Giants general manager George Young. Um, it seems as though, again, they overlooked these two. It's not about really Jones or Tagliabue, but I'm just wondering what's it going to take for these two, especially Young, to get in? Yeah, I mean, you know, when you get passed over enough, I think you can sort of rightfully start asking the question, you know, is it ever going to happen? Um, and, I mean, I guess the best answer is I don't know. You know, it's it's dependent on a group of people who decide these things. Uh, it's not, you know, public vote, uh, and it's really hard to get in. I mean, it, the, you know, the problem is it's it's like all – it's the same in all 
uh, Hall of Fame discussions, it's like it's very easy to say, yes, George Young should absolutely be in. It's a travesty. It's a travesty. Or same with Pat Bowen. Well, then who are you going to take out and why? You know, um, there's only you know you only get a certain number. I know. So I know. I definitely understand, uh, but you know, unfortunately, the question is: Well, if you're going to take out, let's say you're going to take out Jerry Jones. Well, you know what's what's the rationale? Sure. I think everyone. I mean, that was almost a foregone conclusion to me. Yeah. I, I just assumed it. Yeah. Because yeah. of who he is and the way he's viewed and the changes he's made in the league. I mean, there's, you know, look, it's a tough thing, and I hope both those guys get in. But it is, it's, it's probably a battle every time. Yeah, and you look at some of the players too. We had the conversation in closing last week with Dawkins. I mean, you look at the uh, safety position, and all of a sudden, boom! I mean, you don't get in that first try, then you have to worry about guys like the Ed Reeds and the the, the Troy Palomalos, and then yeah. all of a sudden, boom! We're having this conversation five, six years from now, saying, "What? Why isn't <laughs> Why isn't Dawkins in?" So, it's uh, right. you're right. It's a slippery it's slope. Very, very, very hard to get in. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and just, I wish the process was was easier and more guys got in, but. On the other hand, I kind of like that it's hard because when you get in, you know you have earned it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that 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 is a fair point. Uh, Ian, good stuff, pal. Always appreciate it. Uh, thanks for jumping on board for a couple moments. All right, thanks for having All me. Right, you got it, Ian Rapport. Good uh, follow on Twitter at Rapsheet. Does a great job with uh, the NFL Network, NFL Insider.